It's the Brett Winterbull Show. Locked, loaded, and ready to rock and roll. Welcome to the 5 o'clock hour. Miles Simmel in for Brett Winterbull here on AM 760. Talking breaking news. Good show. Good week. Good start to the week. Hopefully, got a short week. Jingles, you got a short week, right? Yes, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brett Winterbull getting some much-needed vacation as well. And I just started off very positive, excited, and now I'm going to depress you because when I heard about what is going on in California to small businesses, I said, oh, man, we've I've got to depress you with what I just heard. So that's what I want to bring this on. But it is a bizarre story. I don't even know that much about it. And I wanted to bring Tom Manzo on, founder of the Californian and Industrial Business Alliance, to explain it. Tom, uh... Where do we even begin? First of all, how are you doing? Good. How are you, Mom? I, I'm doing well up until you tell us what's going on here at California Wise. Can you give us some background? It's called PAGA, the Private Attorney General. What is it? General, what, what does PAGA stand General for? General Act, Private Attorney General Act. General and, Act. And when did it, when did it you start? Know, I, I, I really appreciate you having me on. And, and the problem is, is so many people don't know about it. So the more that we can inform you know, listeners and business owners, uh, everybody that's involved in one of these, the better. Uh, it's called the Private Attorney General Act, and California has a labor law digest. It's about 1,100 pages long. And you've read it all, right? You've read every page. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't, but the attorneys that are suing the businesses have. Uh-huh. And, you know, so what happens is if there's a labor law violation, any violation in there, and let's just use the example of a late lunch. Let's say that you're supposed to take your lunch within five hours, but you take it at five hours and one minute or five hours and and a half, then that is late, and, mm-hmm. and you've violated the California uh, labor law. And once that happens, the employee could go seek an attorney, and that attorney becomes deputized uh, for the state. So he's now... Uh, empowered by the state and can say, okay, I want to see all of your employees' records. I want to see all of the data. I want to see all the information. And they might say, well, I noticed there's more than one employee that took a late lunch. It looks like I need to represent the entire class of employees that took a late lunch. So this this five-minute late lunch can end up turning into a, a class action lawsuit uh, and it's the Private Attorney General Act that allows these attorneys to come in there and, and get all the data and all the information. And that's how these lawsuits end up costing millions of dollars. When you say all of the data, what what is that? What does that look like? Well, they're, they're, they're working on behalf of the state. So they could say, OK, I want to see all the payroll records when they punched in, when they punched out. I want to see your employee handbook. I want to see... Uh, any kind of contractual agreements you have with your employees. I want to see everything, and they have the authority to do that. Mm. Gosh, and and, and it's like anything, right? If they look, if you look hard enough, you're breaking, you and I are breaking a law right now, you know? (laughs) If you look hard enough, you're being able to do it. So what, when did this go into effect, and, and can you bring the union angle into it as well? Sure, sure. So in 2003, uh, uh, Gray Davis, uh, you know, sign this in. And so it became active in 2004. Uh, Joe Dunn was, you know, the senator behind this, uh, you know, bill and, and the push in making it happen. And, uh, you know, it took a while and it took some judges' decisions for this uh, law to really uh, take effect where companies could see um, how they could go in and sue any type of a company, any kind of a nonprofit for any kind of a technicality. And, and, to, and to put this into perspective, there's a recent lawsuit against Walmart, and Walmart owes $102 million. And what they did wrong was when they gave the employees their final paycheck, mm-hmm. they didn't put the week ending date. They didn't short them any of the money. They didn't do anything incorrectly. The only thing that they did incorrectly was – not list the week ending date on the paycheck stuff. It cost them one hundred and two million dollars. <laughs> oh, holy moly! I was gosh. There's so many angles. I was just thinking about if I'm the poor accountant 
that has to fill this out, and I'm terrified that I'm about to make a hundred million dollar mistake every time, uh, you know, if I press the wrong button. So who are? Because you mentioned can. You mentioned the the scenario you gave was an employee. I say, hey, I took my lunch a little late. I want to go out and get an attorney. Can an attorney just come in, or do they need someone to go seek them to tell them that something's going on? Uh, they need an employee to tell them what's going on. Okay. But, but there's no doubt about it. These attorneys are hosting picnics, and they are reaching out to employees on Facebook, and they're you know, hitting the social media hard. You can find them sometimes at Costco, Sam's Club. You can even find them coming out of church sometimes. On a sure. Sunday. You know, hey, have you been getting the correct amount of overtime? So there's some really odd other peculiarities. You know, let's just say, for instance, you wanted to, every Thanksgiving, you wanted to give your employee a gift card to Ralph. Mm-hmm. You wanted to give him a $20 gift card. Thank you for your service. Buy a turkey. We appreciate everything you're doing. Mm-hmm. If that employee works overtime, then you need to recalculate their rate of pay based on that $20 gift card. So you could, in theory, be off by pennies, but if you're off by pennies, it's a labor law violation. Once wow. it's a labor law violation, you could be off by pennies on all 100 of your employees or 500 of your employees or 10 of your employees. Sure class action lawsuit, penalties, 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 they stack up. Before you know it, you have a huge, huge settlement you're trying to work out with these attorneys. Yikes. And you're talking about, I mean, it doesn't matter any business. You talked about Walmart, one of the biggest ones, $100 million. That's an absurd amount. Like you talked about, too, you could talk a 10-person business, a little small business, and that that ruins it. I mean, you know, if you charge a, if you find a business, a hundred grand, it's got 10 employees, that business isn't going to make it or, you know, whatever well, the, it is. To add insult to injury. So I was at the California Trucking Association last week and I was at a meeting and I met with a person who started this company from nothing, had been in business 40, 42 years. And truck drivers, it's really difficult to keep track of their time. Mm-hmm. When do they take their break? When do they take their lunch? Obviously, a lot of times they're on the road. Sometimes they, they pull in to, to, to pick up or deliver, and they have to wait in line. But they have a log, and they have to write it down. But it's still, you have that difficulty of proving, did they really take their lunch or didn't they? Mm-hmm. So it ended up bankrupting his business. And what he found out was that this wage and hour lawsuit under PAGA in 2016, they made it where you're personally liable for it. So now he had to file bankruptcy personally, and and he's left with nothing over employees, you know, contending that they didn't get their lunches. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, you want to cry. Yeah, and what yeah. people don't realize is, is people that have been in business for a lot of years, you know, people wouldn't stay with them that many years if they weren't being treated properly. Sure. But, again, you have difficulties of – of tracking, managing, knowing what needs to be done, you know, simple things like commissions, you know, how do you pay your employees' commissions? You know, how is it calculated? Do you have a written commission agreement? Mm -hmm. If you don't have a written commission agreement, you're violating a labor law regulation. If your restroom is less than 68 degrees, you're violating a labor law. Is that right? (laughs) Yes. Wow. I mean, you name it, anything that you could think of, you know, interrupted breaks. There was a restaurant that employed about 80 people, a uh, very popular restaurant in, in, the, uh, in the San Fernando Valley area, and it cost them a million dollars. And what happened was there was a waitress that was eating her lunch. Somebody was lost. They said, could you please tell me which way the restroom is? She said, it's this way. In reality, her lunch was interrupted. So they said, well, that happens a lot. You know, how do you prove that this didn't happen? And they all get settled in mediation. These all get settled in mediation, and the ones who try to fight it lose. Wow. Who? Wow. So what you're getting, I mean, there's a lot of different directions. What you're getting here is a lot of uh, attorneys saying, hey, 
you're getting discriminated, you're getting these labor laws, I'll fight for you. So you're getting a lot of these, the, the same type of guy that says, hey, the you know, the sidewalk's 10 inches, it's supposed to be 11 inches, I'm going to sue the company Correct. for the same, same type of deal. And they're even promising a lot of these employees, I'll get you 5000 and $10,000. And a lot of times it doesn't work out that way because in mediation, everything's negotiated. Mm. The, what's owed to the employees, what's owed to the state, because the state is supposed to get a piece of this. Sure. But what's not negotiated is the attorney's fees. They get mm. 33 to 40 percent right off the top. <laughs> Tell us the. So they're getting their full amount no matter what. Sure. Tom Manzo. Uh, founder of California and Industrial Business Alliance. Um, Tom, tell us the uh, union aspect in this. Well, you know, I think they've had a heavy influence on creating a lot of the labor laws. And by having that influence on creating the labor laws, it's almost putting you into a point of, well, if if my employees were unionized, maybe I would not be as affected by these type of lawsuits. So, if I'm a business owner and I employ, you know, 50 people and they took their lunches late, I could end up with a big lawsuit. Mm -hmm. If I'm the state of California, Department of Corrections, uh, prison guards at Pelican Bay can work 12-hour shifts, no breaks, no lunches, no penalties because they have what's called a collective bargaining agreement. So it's really it's, – it's, it's not a level playing field as far as I'm concerned. And and what they did last year was they passed a, a carve out for building construction workers who were unionized. Um, they don't have to worry about parking. They, if, you can't do it. You can't sue a, a unionized building construction uh, company. Wow. You can't do it. Yeah, so so an incentive. How, is, how is this a level playing field? And I think the, the approach is wrong, and I think a lot of good businesses are getting hurt. There's a lot of good nonprofits that are being hurt. I know down in uh, your neck of the woods there, the San Diego, the Humane Society got hit with a PAGA lawsuit. Do you know what the specifics were of it? I'm just curious. I, I'm not 100%. Okay. I think it might have been over again and not documenting the lunches correctly. Oh, yikes. Um, that's, that's the biggest one. Really? I mean, it's, so a lot of people didn't have time clocks and time cards uh, systems, you know, and, and, and elaborate systems so they can see who's punching in. A lot of people do it on the honor system, and what's wrong with that? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, it was 23 minutes, not 30 minutes. So what? <laughs> yeah, I, I was busy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, Tom, what are, you, uh, what are you doing to fight this? <laughs> how, how can we help? Uh, well, you know, we tried the leg legislative uh, approach, and, and, and it didn't work, and we decided to sue the state of California, and we are challenging the Private Attorney General Act's constitutionality. Uh, we have standing. Uh, they are going to see what the reasoning behind the bill that was the carve-out for the union workers. And uh, we're questioning the, the constitutionality and separation of powers, and that's part of the complaint You know, we're going back and forth on, and we're hoping that – that will continue. And I think, you know, the ultimate goal is to overturn the, the private attorney general act in a court of law. Well, yeah, <laughs> I hope so. I'm just, I, you and I both know this state and, uh, I'm never too, uh, optimistic about what goes on here, but keep up the fight, Tom. And, uh, and keep us updated on what's going on, even the craziness of it all. And we'll be here to, to, to hear it. Sure. And if anybody wants to check us out, Go to cabia.org, cabia.org. You know, we, we need people to join. We need some funding to keep this lawsuit going. And everybody should stand up and say, hey, enough is enough. We need the entire business community to say, legislators, you know, quit cutting these backroom deals. Quit making it more difficult on business. It needs to stop here. Yeah, it does. Tom Manzo, thanks for joining us, Tom, and we'll talk soon. Thanks, Miles. Awesome. Tom Manzo right there. Ah, oh, gosh. I'm telling you, why Why? Why would you be a business here in California? <laughs> you know, if you're Walmart, wouldn't you just be tempted to say, you know, we're just leaving the state. I know there's money here and there's people here, but you get hit with a $100 million fine? Because you love to take it, that's why. Yeah, gosh, that is frustrating. one 800